Hi everyone. Hello. We're on page 340 of In Search of Christian of In Search of Christian Freedom. And Ray has been talking about the text in 2 John verses 9 to 11 where the watchtower finds his excuse for treating people with disdain, not even saying a greeting to them, not mentioning, of course, welcoming them, to, in, in them into your own home. You can't do that, and you can't even greet them on the street with a simple hello. Mm. And yet the text, if you read it in context, is talking about people who don't remain in the teaching of the Christ. Mm -hmm. So he takes that subject up here in the next few paragraphs. None of these differences of viewpoint or understanding then are involved in the Apostle John's description of one who does not remain in the teaching of the Christ. And he's talking about the differences in viewpoint re respecting the reasons that people are disfellowshipped mm. mm -hmm. commonly in the Watchtower. Well, remaining in the teaching of the Christ, well, I guess that would be technically apostasy, but Ray goes on, nor does the Watchtower's discussion of the rest of John's exhortation conform to the facts. Note this discussion of the word greeting found in this text as presented in the July 15, 1985 Watchtower, page 31. Quote, John added, quote, for he that says a greeting to him is a sharer in his wicked works. That's to John 11. Here John used the Greek word of greeting, Cairo, rather than the word apazomai, found in verse 13. I should reprint, I'll do that again. Aspazomai, I think, is more accurate. Aspazomai, found in verse 13. Cairo means to rejoice. It was also used as a greeting spoken or written. Aspazomai meant to enfold in the arms, thus to greet, to welcome. Either could be a salutation, but aspasomai may have implied more than a polite hello or good day. Jesus told the seventy disciples not to aspasse, excuse me, you Greek scholars, aspasse anyone. He thus showed that their urgent work allowed no time for the Eastern way of greeting with kisses, embraces, and long conversation. Peter and Paul urged quote, greet as spazes they one another with a kiss of love or a holy kiss. So John may deliberately have used Cairo in 2 John 10 and 11 rather than as spazomai, verse 13. If so, John was not urging Christians then to avoid merely warmly greeting with an embrace, kiss, and conversation a person who taught falsehood or who renounced the congregation that is apostatized. Rather, John was saying that they ought not even greet such an individual with Cairo, a common good day. That's yeah. the end of the quote. Mm -hmm. So I apologize for my Greek right off the top. <laughs> Whoever wrote this material, repeated in the April 15, 1988 Watchtower, evidently overlooked or ignored the account in Luke 1, verses 28 and 29. The Watchtower seeks to attribute to the term as pazomai a special warmth of greeting distinctly surpassing that of the word used in John's le second letter, Cairo. That would enable it to say that Cairo, being so much less warm than as pazomai, would relate to more commonplace perfunctionary, no, perfunctory greetings, including a simple hello. I see, I'm not even good on English. <laughs> okay. Keep going. On this basis, they could rule out any verbal communication whatsoever with those they disfellowship. In Luke's account, however, we read the following of God's angel's visit to Mary. And he came to her, quote, this is, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. And the Greek is Kyra here. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the Greek there is as pas 
as pa as pass moss. The two words are here obviously used interchangeably. Mary applies the term aspasmos to the word Kyra, pronounced by the angel. She did not do this because the angel had, in the watchtower definition, enfolded her in his arms or kissed her, nor had he at this point engaged in a long conversation with her. She refers not, not to an embrace or kiss, but to his words. And here the footnote on the page says, at verse 40, a form of aspazomai is again used in referring to Mary's greeting, Elizabeth. But once again, it is simply verbal. For verse 41 speaks of Elizabeth as hearing the greeting, not receiving some warm embrace or kiss. That's in the same chapter. Mm -hmm. Not only does it commit this error, but the watchtower also fails to recognize that the Greek verb kyrain used by John, does not relate to some simple greeting such as hello. It is not the least bit less warm than the other Greek term discussed. To the contrary, the term kyrene literally means to be rejoicing and corresponds to the Hebrew term shalom, meaning peace be with you. It was used to express not a mere commonplace greeting, but to express personal or social favor and acceptance, even to express recognition of authority. And here he has another footnote where he says the official Roman acclamation Hail Caesar is thus rendered in Greek as Kyra Kaiser and the soldiers mockingly use the term in addressing Jesus as the King of the Jews in Matthew 27 verse 29. Recognizing this some translations rather than rendering it sim as simply greeting render it as to welcome capturing well the sense of John's words, one translation reads, quote, Do not welcome him into your home. Do not even say, Peace be with you. And the Living Bible says there, Don't encourage him in any way. Then goes on, For anyone who wishes him peace becomes his partner in the evil things he does. Clearly then, what a Christian denies to an antichrist is not some simple salutation such as hello or how do you do, but denies him the address which implies acceptance and agreement with his person or cause, wishing him favor and success. To welcome him in this manner would indeed make one a sharer in his wicked works. To the contrary, simply t talking to a person does not of itself imply acceptance agreement or favor. It is what one says that determines this. Certainly one does not become his partner in evil things, he does, if one endeavors to refute him or talk him out of his wrong views, convincing him of the error of his ways. Quite the opposite, the scriptures show this can be a Christian duty. And here he has a, a footnote giving two to, uh, three scripture references, and we'll read the first one, James 5, 19 and 20. My brothers, if anyone among you is misled from the truth, and another turns him back, know that he who turns a sinner back from the error of his way will save his soul from death, and will cover a multitude of sins. And we know in a use of that before, Ray had pointed out, this is not the elders who are yeah. to restore the one who's going into error. Because he says brothers. Brothers. It's the whole congregation has this responsibility. Mm -hmm. And similarly, in, in Titus, although here he is talking to an elder, that is a pastor, as it were, of maybe not just one congregation, but many, that's Titus. So in the letter of Titus, we have this in chapter 1, verses 10 to 13. For there are many who are insubordinate, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party. They must be silenced, since they are upsetting whole families by teaching for shameful gain what they ought not to teach. One of the Cretans, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. He's not, aff <laughs> not affirming what they said about Cretans, but he's saying, Mind what I'm telling you about what to do about these men. Therefore rebuke them sharply, 
that they may be sound in the faith. Oh, so he still regards them as in the faith, but deceiving households. Mm -hmm. So what you do with deceivers and what what the Watchtower would call apostates. Yeah, they would disfellowship you. So here, as Ray very rightly says, this is not what even an apostle like Paul advocates as being the right way to treat people who are yeah. in error and even spreading their errors. Yeah, you might rebuke, but then you try and turn them around. You engage enough so that you can reason with them and you can you can discuss the things. And presumably, if they're having that much influence in the congregation, as Paul to Titus indicates, mm. you've got to do some of this publicly. Mm. Just as Paul did, we remember, in one case in Galatians, where he had to he had to reprove or even rebuke Peter mm. publicly for some false step he was making yeah. and passing around. His, mm. In his, of course, being Peter, he would would be having much influence on a lot of people, so it was appropriate to do it mm -hmm. in public. Mm -hmm. So in the next section, we're going to go on talking about the policy, this policy the Watchtower has uh, utilized over the decades, how it's been adjusted frequently, and yet even if, even if we take the Watchtower's light as being discipline for the right reason, i.e. to restore people ultimately and to protect the flock at the same time. Mm -hmm. Are they really following the example mm -hmm. of Jehovah, of Jesus Christ, and of Paul and the other apostles in the way they do this? So we will, we will put a link though to the end of this one on uh, five characteristics of cults. We did a video on that. And also on slander. A greatly underrated sin. Mm -hmm. Right up on your screen right now. Mm -hmm.